This plant that I have mounted here is called Echidnophytum mausoleanum. And mausoleum or mausoleanum, I think generally means like mausoleum. So maybe where things kind of look like a mausoleum perhaps. And this is commonly known as ant plant. So this plant is actually developing a relationship with ants. Of course, not in your own home, but in the wild where it actually grows. So this one is native to Queensland and Australia, New Guinea, kind of the Philippines area, and some also some other islands like the Solomon Islands and a number of others out there. But ant plants have become a little bit more popular in the houseplant market. Sometimes they're difficult to take care of because they need to be kept within kind of a minimal temperature. These do not do well in colder temperatures. So you wanna probably hit it with a little bit more of like a minimum of 65 degrees, even in the winter months. So if it's next to a drafty window, forget it. And if you're growing it epiphytically, like I am here on the sphagnum, which I've already noticed has already dried out and I watered this yesterday, then you're going to want to water it a little bit more because what you'll see and this might be an indication of it, you see this little leaf right here that kind of dried off, it was like a new little leaf. If these dry out, it will lose its leaves. So you gotta be very mindful of that and just be um, watering this a little bit more on a regular basis. Now, because this doesn't have a symbiosis with ants, hopefully, within your home, I know some people have written in and they said that they found ants in their house, it's probably not coming from an ant plant, it's probably coming from another planter or because you have food kind of lying around your house. But I do have to say that this should be fertilized and when you're growing something on a mount and epiphytically, I find that it's easier to fertilize the plant with a spray bottle. So if you want to get um, some of your succulent fertilizer, so like a 347 or 247, kind of a 122, something like that, uh, in a spray bottle and actually spray it when you've just moistened the sphagnum so that at least some of that fertilizer could actually make its way into the sphagnum and towards the root of this plant. The other thing I should say about it drying out if you're, if you're growing this on a mount is if you let it dry out too much, not only will the leaves fall off, but part of the reason um, is that if the roots dry out, it's going to be really difficult to reestablish the roots of this plant. So it's just one of those things that when you, you're working with plants on mounts, um, that is just something to kind of keep in mind. You wanna keep the, the roots moist, but also give it a lot of airflow so that it's not like sitting in water all the time. Um, the other thing is that if you're not growing this on a mount, you can actually grow it in a you know planter pot. I would give it a little bit more of a succulent soil, maybe even a barkier mix, um, because these plants are typically growing epiphytically in their uh, native habitats. And yeah, cool little plant to have and nice little history to be able to share in, in regards to the symbiosis with ants. But uh, don't freak out because if you have an ant plant in your home, it often means that ants are not included.